boys and girls of Jonesboro, Arkansas. My name is Gareth Johnson. I'm 36 years old. I'm from South Florida, from West Palm Beach. So it's a little bit shocking, this weather that you all have up here for me. And unfortunately, we were closed down, but I wish I could have made it in for a presentation with you all. I'm going to start by playing a little bit of violin for you before I talk too much about myself or about just talking. But it'll be good to start with a little bit of Bach, the father of the Baroque period of music. And this is just an excerpt from his Chaconne, one of the most well-known pieces for violin. That was an excerpt from Johann Sebastian Bach's Chaconne from his second violin partita in D minor. Music comes from all over the world and so many different places, different countries, written by different composers. Bach was just one of many uh, from his period. We also had Vivaldi during that same period. And if you haven't heard of who Vivaldi is, you've probably heard some of his music whether it's in a movie or an elevator or at some point in your life, um, I bet you anything you've heard this. That's from Vivaldi's Four Seasons. That's from his spring season. And it's interesting, during the seasons, Vivaldi almost represented picture music. He had poems that actually even went along with these seasons. And in the poems, for example, during the spring, you hear the birds chirp. Here's an example of the birds chirping in the springtime. Also another example that I love from the Vivaldi Four Seasons is in his winter concerto. He has one that represents each season. In the winter, uh, we, we get cold. It's very well represented up here with what you all have going on here. And your, your, your teeth will chatter. And he actually wrote something that represents the teeth, teeth chattering. And 
I'll get into it in just a couple measures here. See if you can recognize the teeth chatter. That actually represented the, the feet stomping to get the snow off of your feet in this messy weather that you all have going on here. <laughs> so above all, they knew everything going on with this weather. Being from South Florida, I'm not quite as used to it as I said, but it's nice to be up here with you all. And I hope that, I hope that a lot of you will have t attended my concert, which takes place on Sunday. You might be watching this after Sunday. I'm not sure when this is uh, going on exactly for you and your life. But I hope you will have attended my concert. And in that case, you will have heard some of my hip hop music as well. Which, all of this music that I'm playing for you, this is what trained me to do what I'm doing now. I actually, I make my living, most of my living playing hip hop songs and, and rap music and R&B songs. I can play music by Drake, by, uh, by Rick Ross, by Kodak Black. I play a little bit of music by all of the great rappers out there and also the R&B singers like her and uh, Bruno Mars. Um, I would do some of that for you here, but really that it's very necessary to have a track behind you with drums, and, and percussion, because that's the true essence and soul of hip-hop music. You have to have some sort of rhythm backing you up. And although the violin can be sort of rhythmic in some of the techniques that we have, it can only be so rhythmic, and I'd, I'd rather not display that for you just with the violin. So, on to some more music, because as I wanted to say, most of this comes from classical training, a lot of hard work, a lot of practice. Because I heard that most of you all hearing me speak are musicians, so I want you to know the true essence of where all of this comes from. It comes from many, many hours of practice. And I can't, I, I can't uh, really say enough, scales. Scales and slow practice, okay? They bring me into a lot of schools throughout my time. I'm 36 years old, I'm getting old, I'm probably a little older than I look. But throughout my time I've been into hundreds and hundreds of schools and they take me in there to get kids to be encouraged to play instruments like, hey, play the violin, it's a lot of fun. Yes, it is fun, but it's also a lot of work just like anything else that you're going to be serious at. Uh, if you do put the proper amount of work in on the violin, to play the violin very, very well, you could have probably done anything. You, you had the, if, if you have the discipline to play violin, then you probably have the discipline to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or an astrophysicist, or a computer programmer, okay? So, or a computer coder. So, I say this just to say, I highly encourage only going to music if you truly, truly love it, because it's not an easy living. Uh, musicians have to find a way, uh, unless you are one of these incredible, phenomenal rappers like who I mentioned earlier, <laughs> which is like one in a uh, hundred million people or so. But un unless you, you truly just can't live without music, I'd almost recommend going another way because it's not an easy living. And I, I'm here to tell you the truth, okay? To get where I am took a couple hours of practice in scales every day, probably at your age, whoever is watching this. I started violin at nine years old. 
Uh, whenever I was 10, 11, 12 years old, I was practicing scales for about an hour or two a day, as well as all of these pieces that you, you hear me playing and the piece that you might hear me play on Sunday. I'll, I'll display a little bit of it for you today as well. The Sensor Introduction and Rondo Precioso. But all of this, as I said, took a lot of work and discipline. It's not all fun, but it is extremely rewarding after you do put that work in. And I wouldn't want to do anything else with my life, honestly. I love music. So let me display for you a little bit of what I'm going to be playing on Sunday with the Symphony Orchestra, written by Sansal, Camille Sansal, his introduction, Rondo Capriccioso. I'll play for you about the first half of the piece. The piece is quite long, so I don't want to lose your attention too much.
Sansone Introduction Rondo Capriccioso, which I'll be playing with the Delta Symphony Orchestra, which I hope you made it to hear that concert, because I think it's going to be pretty epic, along with some of my original compositions in hip-hop for hip-hop violin and orchestra. Now, I hate to talk all about this and you don't get a chance to really hear me do it because that's disappointing. So I want to point out a place where you can go follow me or you don't have to follow. You can just take a listen if you don't like it and not hit the follow button. On Instagram, you can go to Gareth, that's my first name, G-A-R-E-T-H underscore live, okay? Gareth underscore live on Instagram. Follow me there. I'm playing everything that I talked about to you earlier. All of the Bruno Mars, all the R&B music, all of the hip hop with tracks behind it. So it's actually a cool page to follow because what does someone play over hip hop violin? That's the question. What am I actually playing over the track? Okay, I, for example, I just played the, I just learned the new uh, Kodak Black Super Gremlin song. And there's no melody really, except for the, the hook of the song. And the hook sounds like this. But then for the, the verse, he's just talking. So the question is, what does a hip hop violinist do whenever a rapper's just talking? Okay, you have a few choices. First of all, if you're actually in a live performance, I don't recommend playing while the rapper's talking. But if they give you a chance and your own verse over a track, I play things basically that I learned and was trained to play in classical music. Okay, so a hip-hop verse might sound like this. So, you basically learn ways to adapt to the beat and fit in with the music, but still play something cool that people like and enjoy. And if you've studied enough classical music, then your technique is probably developed enough to still play something where you'll be respectfully playing something. Okay? So, as I said, I don't want to talk to you too much because I don't want to bore you. I'm going to play for you a little bit more violin, and we'll call it a day. Um, I played for you today a little bit of Bach, a little Vivaldi, a little Sanson. These are great pieces, uh, great, great composers who wrote amazing pieces for violin. Um, let me take you on a, jur a journey of a few more great composers for violin uh, before we wrap it up. Number one, we have uh, a guy named Pablo de Sarasate. Pablo de Sarasate, he was a Spanish composer who wrote very, very high level uh, music for violin as well. And an example of, of Sarasate's music, um, we have the, the Zegwinnerweiser, um, which means gypsy airs. So he wrote gypsy sounding music and it's really awesome. It consists of amazing techniques. And uh, in the gypsy scale, you've probably heard some gypsy music if you've ever seen the movie Aladdin, which is a Disney movie. And it's based off of a scale. That is the harmonic minor scale, which I'm sure you'll all learn. As I said, you must study your scales being a classical musician. And you've probably heard a scale similar to that if you've seen the movie Aladdin. But they even take that scale further. This is the gypsy minor scale.
So with those augmented second intervals, it makes it sound really kind of Middle Eastern sounding, which is cool, I think, because it represents music from different parts of the world. And Sarasati did this very, very well in his Gypsy Airs. Um, I don't know if I should be playing this on the spot because I didn't practice it, but it starts off. Gypsy interval. So Sarasate, he wrote cool things like that, just representing different areas of the world. Uh, then we have Vinyavsky. Henri Vinyavsky, he wrote many different violin concerti and showpieces for the violin. Almost similar to uh, the Senso Introduction Rondo Capriccioso showpiece. But he wrote, for example, the Scherzo Tarantella, another fast, really cool. So that's his Scherzo Tarantella. Then an epic legend who we cannot forget about is Niccolo Paganini. He wrote some of the greatest music and, and show pieces and coolest techniques for violin. The reason I'm talking about all these technicians on violin rather than so much like Beethoven and Mozart is because in, in modern day 2022, we better have some really cool stuff to present to our listeners uh, to keep their attention, to hold their attention. Um, especially when it comes to saying, oh, I do hip hop music. And it's like, well, why do you do hip hop music? Because I can play double stops and cool techniques and spiccato and uppo staccato and a lot of cool things that I've learned from my classical training, I'm able to put them over into hip hop, basically. That's what, that's what this is, okay? Um, so Niccolo Paganini, back to the, uh, the father of the Italian violinist, basically. He wrote some really cool techniques, for example. Uh, one of them, you'll, you'll, a few of them you'll see at the concert that I'm playing on Sunday within my own original compositions. But as I said, I'm not gonna show you those. I can show you some Paganini, though. For example, his ricochet stroke, which is bouncing the bow from one string to another, or on the same string, so many times in a controlled manner, the ricochet stroke. So Paganini would write stuff like this with the Caprices, that's the first violin caprice. Can you imagine he wrote 24 of these? And each one of them has a completely different technique. So in that first one, you're ricocheting across the string. Like that. Which a lot of composers copied after that as well. Uh, the second one, you're, you're basically getting all across the different strings. The third one has a completely different technique. The fourth one's full of double stops all over the place. So just these crazy double stops which improve your technique. The fifth one has unbelievably fast 16th note. For like two minutes straight, you're just playing 16th notes like that. 
The sixth one has trills with double stops involved, like this. So I just want to show you all of these as examples of the, the composers and people that came before me are the ones that I studied. But as I said, I put hours and hours and hours of work into this. And it started off with just the basics of scales. Um, if, if I took you through what I actually had to go through, I'd lose you. I'd lose your concentration, okay? The amount of boy, it started here with the... An hour or two a day until you get that absolutely perfect and then you speed it up and it's molded within your hand and you become a true instrumentalist and violinist so it takes hard work boys and girls I don't want to try to fool you or trick you this is not easy sometimes it, people tell me oh you make it look really easy what you're doing and I get a lot of students who come to me and try to learn tricks to play in the violin like, Oh, what's the trick? What's the secret? There isn't a secret. There's no trick. It's a lot of hard work. It takes time. It takes sleeping on it sometimes. Sometimes you might not get something immediately, but if you sleep on it, there, there are techniques that took me literally over 10 years to learn how to do properly on the violin or, or up to my standard of liking. So sometimes it just takes trusting a process trusting your teacher and and believing in, in what came before you but trust me you do have to study something these days this day and age you're not going to make it by studying TikTok or anything like that i see a lot of kids these days a little bit too much into that you're not going to become a star like that i, I bet you but it, hey prove me wrong if you do good for you but it's very, very difficult unless you develop a skill. And developing a skill usually takes some hard work and some time. So don't, don't try to avoid it too much. Whatever you do, as I said, it's going to take some hard work these days. But try to do what you love. As I said, the violin takes so much discipline and hard work that I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you absolutely love it. I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you can't live without it. But otherwise, if you, if you can't live without it, go for it. Put in that little bit of work because after you do trust the process and put in the time, it's more rewarding than anything. I love to play the violin. The violin to me is more rewarding than any video game. I have a PlayStation 5. I have all that stuff. I'm successful from playing the violin. I do very, very well playing the violin. Um, I have the Oculus, I have all, I'm in Metaverse, I'm in all of that. But actually the violin is still more satisfying for me and more fun, more engaging for my brain than all of that stuff. And, and I enjoy that stuff. It's relaxing to sit down and go into the Metaverse and control, play Star Wars with your lightsaber and things like that. It's all cool, really cool stuff. I'm not saying it's not. But then we have to have the discipline behind it all too. So we have to get out of there and actually study something or study something in there. I don't know what people are doing these days. Uh, but I'm a violinist, so it kind of comes back to the old fashioned, just put all that stuff down sometimes and, and go back to the old school ways of learning and studying hard. Um, I studied a lot of mathematics as a kid. I think that that really helped me as well become a great violinist. Uh, I was very, very solid. Studied Kumon math, Japanese math, and it helped me a lot to get where I am as well. But main, main message to you boys and girls, it does take work. It's not all fun and games. And I hope to see all of you next time whenever I'm on this stage with me, playing with me on the stage. And it's really been a pleasure being here in Jonesboro, Arkansas with you. Thank you so much for having me.